this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. I am here, it's just that the camera is actually a, a lot closer than normal and I can't get out the way far enough back. So you have to put up with the uh, lack of face. Um, what's he up to now, I hear you ask? Well, what he's actually up to now is the continuing saga of decking the scale. And the original problem was the scale on the Catlia types, mainly the holy clay pots, although there were others. Um, now in the previous treatment, which I did in the kitchen because I could, um, basically because there wasn't a lot of splashing about going on, whereas there might be this time, um, a few smaller cat layers like this got done um, because they were mounted and that session was to do the mounts. This session is for the holy clay pots. If I don't divide my orchids up into logical sets, because there's no way I can do the whole lot in a day, using the dunking thing. But I'll come on to that in a minute. My idea is to pick those that are def definitely have some scale. Um, some will be worse than others, but I'm aware that that plant has some scale, are going to get dunked as their initial treatment. Those that may or may not have some are going to get sprayed. And subsequent treatments of all the ones so far that have been dunked, and possible future ones that are going to get dunked, will get sprayed next time round. Now there's a little bit of logic there. Oh, it's so hot. I've had to turn all the kit off because of the noise. And I haven't got a huge number of holy clay pots, but I'm still going to do them in little sets of half a dozen or so, so that I can get out. <laughs> so I'm obviously not going to film it all. The reason I want to get out is to be able to turn the kit back on. Because without the extractor and the inlet fan, the heat's going to rise in here. Humidity will drop. And at the moment, the door's open because the camera's in the doorway. And all that heat's going in my flipping lounge. Where, out of the corner of my eye, I am actually watching the snooker. And I'm actually watching Williams playing O'Sullivan. And Williams has had the audacity to take the first frame. Damn cheek. <laughs> That's going to be a flipping good match. I'll be on for a fair bit of the afternoon, if not all of it. So I'm watching that out the corner of my eye. Right. What we've got in here this time is because we're dunking more than we were last time. So we've had to have a bigger container. Consequently, there's a lot more water. That's part of the reason to switch into spraying. Now, although I had two of these, <laughs> what I didn't realise was the one at the back, which I thought was full, wasn't. So both of these have been opened. And that doesn't matter, but it means I haven't necessarily got quite as much as I thought I had. Now we um, established last time that um, the uh, <laughs> measurements were 20 mil per two litres. And I've got eight, so I need four capfuls, um, because this is 20 millimetres ago. Millilitres, sorry, not millimetres. Well, I got the milli bit right, I suppose. Right, so we've got one. Two. Three. Four. Now that is 80 millilitres for this session. The bottle is 500. There aren't that many 80s in 500. So I don't want to run out. Now I suspect I can buy this on eBay. I mean I've always got it from Peter White because I can buy it from him at a show and not pay postage. Um, and I like to support my, you know, local suppliers and friends in that case. Yeah, so um, that's why I've always bought it there. But um, I'm not really prepared to pay Peter White's postage on an item like that. Um, because the chances are on eBay I'll probably get postage free. Um, but I would have rather buy it off Peter. But the final attempt at a show. Bournemouth Orchid Society have been working hard for the last couple of months to really try and get their show off the ground and so I'm just getting my towel. I got an email 
well, was either yesterday or the day before, saying that um, although their attempts had been pretty successful and it was looking good for the show to take place as far as the venue was concerned, um, one of the traders wasn't prepared to come and nearly half the membership were not prepared to come. And without them, you know, it needs bodies to help set the show up, to run it and everything like that, and there wouldn't have been enough people. So that's been cancelled. So that's it. I don't believe there will now be any orchid shows in the UK this year. I know Ed, their, um, I don't know whether it was his actual society or a combo of several societies, but they managed to get one off the ground, but not very well attended. And a lot of people packed their plants up and went home halfway through the day, apparently. That's not good, you know. But then if there was hardly any of the public there, you can see the point, can't you? And the longer you stay in a building, the higher your risk. So I didn't really have a problem with that. Ed managed to get some good filming done, so... That was the important thing. Well, from our point of view, that was the important thing. He bought some plants as well. I don't know what you're up to, Ed, but you've always been the frag man and the path man. And now we've got catlias, we've got masdevallias, and now we've got flipping oncidium types. What are you up to? Are you aiming for a varied collection now? You'll be catching me up. <laughs> well, knowing you, you'll overtake me as well. Um, I mean, I've got no plans on diversifying any more this year. Um, I've diversified enough. Now, these are going to have to go on the floor when I've done them. But most of the scale are here. Whoa! Let's go right up to the camera. Down in there, where spikes have been cut off and the leaf has that shape. They get down in there. They also get on the pseudo bulbs in that one's case. Yeah? Um, so down in the leaf joints, definitely, and all around the base, under the rhizome, top of the roots, possibly down further in the pot, I can't see. So the idea is, I've forgotten one vital piece of equipment as well, Lynn in Australia said, why don't you get a strainer, then when all your bark floats out of the pot, you can just whisk it round like that and put it back in again. I will go and get that in a minute. But this particular pot, as you can see, the bark isn't all coming out because it's got such a big root mass. Um, I've got one piece of bark to put back in so far. But the idea is, is while it's in here, we give it a good soak. Right down in all those leaf joints. Yeah? Running down the pseudo bulbs. Let's get the plant absolutely smothered. So that was the idea of having it in here. It's frothing up now, isn't it? Oh, I'm talking of froth. I hate to say it, but this is in place of the bleach treatment. Now, I haven't chickened out, because I, I know it works. Um, it has done for more than enough people for me to accept that it works. There is a little bit of a possible calculation. Depending on how much water you're going to have, you need to know that your solution is at least strong enough. I've heard enough people say it doesn't matter if it's a bit too strong because you're going to rinse it all off before it can do any damage. That sounds okay, but if it's not strong enough it, it's hardly going to be worth bothering because it won't work. So there has to be a bit of uh, working out to do. Um, but this is instead of the bleach. Now I'll explain the logic why. The bleach treatment we know will kill the crawlers. Anything that kills insects will kill the crawlers. There is nothing I know of, correct me if I'm wrong, that will penetrate the hard shell guarding the female with her eggs and the initial hatching of the crawler stage. And that includes the bleach treatment. And most of the treatments you do for bugs accept the fact that they don't kill eggs, so you will have to treat again for any that hatch out after your treatment. So, if that's the case with the scale, which is what I'm treating, the bleach would have only killed the crawlers, and it was a lot more fuss than what I've just done here. You see what I'm getting at? 
Plus I've got the splashing on my clothes and, and I've had to clear all the plants out from underneath. What I've just done there, and also my hands can stay in this all day long. The only consequence of that will be they will be incredibly clean. <laughs> so that's the beauty of this stuff. It cleans your leaves off absolutely. Well, so does the bleach actually. So all those of you who were waiting for the bleach and everything, sorry, but in here it's not going to happen because this is easier. I've already got the stuff and I haven't got to go to the shop, so I'm just giving the pseudo bulbs a good rub. So any uh, loose stuff comes off. And then we've got a pot full of froth. Now, in theory, I should go and rinse that now, but um, what, I, I, I will rinse them, I think. That's, that's, that's an awful lot of soap on the roots. Um, and there's nowhere in the instructions of this stuff that mentions roots. <laughs> and I'm not doing it. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to go in a spray. It's not a soak under normal circumstances. But that's the idea, and I think I will throw some clean water on these once I've uh, done them, is to give them a good soak. I suspect a lot more bark's going to come out of this one. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll go and get the strainer so that you can see what, uh, what Lynn was getting at, see all the gear. Won't be a minute. It's strange actually, my strainer, the handle broke off years ago because it used to have a handle like that. And I've actually found that I don't need a handle, I just use it like that. And that, that's a good grip, provided you don't, I mean I, I put my rice in there when it's cooked and then pour water over it to rinse it. So providing you don't pour the boiling water all over your thumb, that actually works quite well. And um, I suspect it's going to do this job very well. Well, so again, we get the leaves done, all down the pseudo bulbs, front and back of the leaves, don't miss any out. There's no point in doing this sort of thing if you miss any part of the plant. You must get every single bit of the plant. No gaps, no messing, no undersides of leaves forgotten. And then again, I'm just going to go over the... Uh, Pseudo bulbs. Just run my fingers over the leaves so that uh, if there are any scale on there that have been dislodged, they're out of it. <laughs> they're in a bowl of uh, soapy treatment. They ain't going to come out of there alive, are they? I also make sure my leaves are lovely and clean. And while my pseudo bulbs are absolutely soaking wet like they are now. There aren't any on this plant because they've already been removed. But when they're soaking wet like that, it's an awful, awfully good time to get your sheaths off. Yeah, while they're wet, they come off an awful lot easier. Yeah, so I shall be doing that as and when I can. So that's that one done. And that's the pot, the media, the roots, the rhizome, including under the rhizome that I can't normally do. You've got no guarantee a spray would get there either. No guarantee. Right. And then, the idea is, I wasn't expecting as much froth in the bowl, I must admit, is we just whiz round with the uh, strainer and put the bark back in the pot. Oh, I just need to uh, put the pot somewhere. <laughs> I wasn't expecting as much froth as this, I must admit. But, you know, I don't want that wasted. And... I don't really want to go and get new stuff and put six new pieces of bark in. I'd rather put the old stuff back in the places it's just fallen out of um, rather than go and get new stuff. So that's the idea of the strainer is to save faffing around with my hands. And um, we shall continue. That is the game, basically. And um, the trouble is I need to go very careful about where I put things. We'll do another one, let's do a big one. This is the reason I had to go for the larger container, is plants like this. This is my larger holy clay pot. Um, now, 
that was an adult scale there. I don't know whether that was on the camera or not. That was up on the leaf. So in, on some of my plants, there's another one there. On some of, there's another two there actually. On some of my plants, they are starting to climb the leaves. Yeah. Now, I've always said, as long as they stay around the rhizome, they can't really do too much harm. But now that I've actually found out that their bites, their saliva, is actually toxic, to the extent that it kills cells quite badly, um, they're not okay around the rhizome, are they? Because <laughs> um, if they're nibbling into that and leaving toxins in there, that could affect new growths and actually stop them from progressing properly. So, uh, we don't want them, do we? So I'm throwing this around all over the place. It's, um, it's a cattleya. If this was an oncidium, I'd have broken half a dozen leaves by now, but not on a cattleya. Nice sturdy leaves. Nice strong new growths in this one. Yeah. So make sure everything's been covered. Then we go back with our fingers and go over each leaf like that so that anything that's loose gets done. Be careful. Watch what you're doing. Don't miss any leaves out. It's a process. I mean, I've started in one corner and I'm moving steadily across the plant until I get to the far side. I won't have missed any. So that way, if there are any claw crawlers lurking on a leaf joint or anything like that, we should have got them. We certainly will have got everything on the rhizome. We will have got all of our dust and particles off of our leaves. They'll all be shiny and clean. That wasn't the intention. Now we move down to the rhizomes and again systematically start on one side of the plant. And as I'm doing this, some of the sheaths are going to come off because this one hasn't been done. Not all of them anyway. So we'll try and get the uh, sheaths off as we, as we go. I've done a lot of them. But uh, that's the place where they like to hide. But this stuff soaks through. These sheaths were hard. They're soft now. And they're coming off as easy as anything. Which means it's soaked through to the actual rhizome. To the, sorry, to the um, pseudo bowl. So if there was anything lurking underneath, it's had a coating. It's had some of the stuff. That's a bonus. Right, is that one cleaned up? I want to go steady. I have actually got new growths on this one, which I don't want to damage. So the sheaths at the very base of those get to stay at the moment. So there we go. So I could try and wash this froth off, but uh, not now. It's not worth it, is it? And then on this one, so little bark came out. I can just I can actually catch it with my hand. I'm not worried about the strainer. That's it. It's just those few pieces. So you get the idea, and you can see that the whole plant has had a good coating. Um, I don't think I could achieve that with a spray. So my second treatment may well have to be this, the dunk. It may not. I haven't made my mind up yet. Oh, that's good. Plants are starting to dry off. <laughs> Despite... Gosh, what are we up to in here? Well, actually, it's not as hot as I thought it was. It's only 27. But it feels more because I'm working, I suppose. Anyway, so I'm going to crack on. I'll do a shelf at a time. And then what I will probably do is my vanda bucket, which currently has a vanda in it soaking, so it's being watered, has still only got RO water in it, it's got no food in it. So it's actually clean RO water. And I think I'm going to use the vanda bucket to rinse all these off. And then I can dispose of that water. And then tomorrow morning, first thing, I can get the RO unit on and start replenishing the RO water stocks. Because at the moment, my header tank feeding Hurricane Hector is gobbling the stuff. It holds around, I think, about 15 litres, that header tank, maybe a bit more. And I'm using 10 litres a day trying to keep this place humid, just because of the temperature. Luckily, at the moment, we have a little bit of a bonus. The weather is such that 
the air temperature of the air being sucked in is warmer than I would like and it's around the same temperature as I'm trying to keep the grow room um, which is you know I don't really want to go much higher than 27 28 and I'm managing that fine and we have a little bonus at the moment the outside air is incredibly humid so the air I'm sucking in isn't removing all of my humidity like it normally does but even so 10 litres a day for Hurricane Hector. That's a lot of RO water. So this is the principle. Um, as far as I know, this stuff is not depleting in its ability to do its job via use, if you see what I mean. Um, it's not getting weaker or anything like that. Um, so I will carry on a shelf at a time and then get out, turn the kit back on, let this atmosphere in here get back to how it should be then come back in, rinse that set off, put them back up on the shelf, start on the next shelf. And I've got three lots to do. Um, out of those lots, um, there's, a, there's only five or six plants in each lot. It's not like a huge amount of work. This one's gonna get a lot of bark come off. See, now you get a nice plant like this. This is in a huge pot, because apparently it's an incredibly vigorous grower. Where are the scale on this plant then? Oh, they're difficult to find. But this is a new growth. Down at the base is a, another new growth. And over here is quite a nice new growth extending. And the base of that new growth is covered in scale. They're biting into that new growth. That's got to be weakening it. So you see what I mean? They gotta go. Now when I put this one in, this hasn't long been in the pot. Half the bark's gonna come out. I know it is. Yeah, there it all goes. <laughs> But it's got to be pushed down into the liquid because um, it's got to be soaked. Yeah. So uh, I will carry on busying myself away. Um, I'm quite enjoying this at the moment because I can actually still watch the snooker while I'm in here. <laughs> now I couldn't do that down the garden in a greenhouse, could I? I suppose I could have a little portable TV. I've got a thing actually, since I... Um, first ventured out and got a really large screen for the computer that's when I was using the desktop um, and I bought a large you know sort of almost TV size screen to go with that desktop I can't watch a small screen anymore I'm squinting and I'm thinking to myself how on earth could you watch that you can't flip and see anything so I admire people who watch YouTube videos on a phone because I can't I can't see anything. I imagine my eyes aren't exactly brilliant at the moment. I'm getting on a bit, you know. And, um, you know, he, last time I went to the opticians, he said, well, I'm pleased to tell you, Mr. Frampton, with the aid of glasses, we can get your vision at least as good as 2020. Now, everybody thinks in their mind, 2020 vision is perfect. It's not, it's average. <laughs> people have got better than 2020 vision. And that includes some people who wear glasses. It depends on the state your eyes are in. But anyway, I'm getting on a bit. My eyes will deteriorate as I get older, obviously, like everybody's do. And anybody who doesn't wants to think themselves incredibly lucky. I would love to be at my age and be able to see fine at close in, middle distance, watch TV, that sort of stuff, driving and long distance, my nature stuff. I'd love to be able to do all that without glasses, and no, I'm not wearing contact lenses. I can't stand any poking around my eyes, and that would, I can't imagine I would ever even open my eye to be able to put one in, so that ain't happening. So I have to put up with glasses, life, and all that. Right, um, one more to do on this shelf, and then we'll, uh, I didn't see who won that frame. Uh, never mind. I think it's best at 25. I've got plenty of time to see who's winning and who's doing what. Yeah. Right, so that's the process. And sorry, but this replaces the bleach treatment for the holy clay pots on the grounds that the bleach wouldn't have done any more or very, very little more than this stuff does. And I've already got this stuff. It's cheap and cheerful. I can keep my hands in it all day long. And... I'm just happy with this. I've got no fumes, I've got no, you know, I don't even like the smell of bleach, I really don't. 
It reminds me of swimming pools, municipal swimming pools, that chlorine, bleachy, eye-watering, horrible smell that you have to have because kids go in the pool and wee. <laughs> That's what it comes down to, isn't it? You wouldn't need all that if nobody weed in the pool. Uh, anyway, I shall carry on and get this, this bit done today. Tomorrow, I will think about what to do next. And what's left to do are some pots that are not holy clay pots that have got scale. And they could do with a dunk to make sure the pots are done. And then from that point on, I may do one more dunking treatment for the cat beers because they're pretty bad. And um, from now on, the rest will probably just get a thorough spraying, which will, you know, that can include the base of the plants. But I've got to keep at this. There's no point in starting this if I don't keep it up, which means I need a plentiful supply. Um, that's probably got enough. Well, it's certainly got more than a cat full. But it's not got a lot in it. And the other one, as I said, I thought it was new, but it's not. This one is about there, I would say. So I need to get some more, and um, I'd like to get it from Peter White because I like to support friends and local suppliers and things, but I'm not going to be able to. Plus, he's going to take ages to get it to me. <laughs> so it's going to have to be a eBay job, I think. So we'll see. And um, I'll see you next time. I'll let you know in this video, because this, will this be the next one posted? Yes, it will. Um, the Miltoniopsis pollination thing is going to be a project from now. Um, I think it's interesting enough, not for everybody, it's not for everybody, it's for those that are interested. And I'm happy to do it for those, even though it might only be a few people. But I've set up a playlist for all the videos in there. I've already done video two, which you're not having today. <laughs> you can have that tomorrow. Um, but basically I will update the progress of the project, which is from me pollinating that plant, which was the first video you saw, providing it works of course, right through to creating the pod, getting it sent off, at which point there will be a seriously long gap, but I'll get updates via email, which I can pass on, and at some point or another those seeds are going to go in a flask, on an agar solution, they will germinate, they will be grown on, replated, and eventually they will come out and go into little pots as tiny little seedlings. And at some point after that, I will get my share back for me to grow on. And there'll be an element of pride in that because these, these plants need looking after. You know, any, anything that's getting a bit <laughs> thin on the ground in the wild we have to keep the cultivated versions going. You can't go out in the wild and get back up new stock in, you know. So, I've turned it into a playlist and a project and we will follow it right through to the point where the plants come back as little seedlings to me, if it all goes okay, and then they'll be grown on and some will be moved on to other people. And eventually, hopefully, we'll get back to where we are now and I'll have a blooming plant. Except for it's the one that's come back round full circle, probably in six years, <laughs> maybe seven. <laughs> yeah. You're all still going to be here then? Uh, Open-ended question, will I still be here? <laughs> anyway, I'll crack on with this because it's the heat's building up in here. I've got one more to do off of that shelf and then I can shut the door up, put the kit back on, go and watch a bit more snooker, a couple more mouthfuls of wine. Notice there's not a lot of red wine getting drunk at the moment, not in this weather. I can tolerate the heat, but I don't do too much when it's like this. So, thanks for dropping by. As I said, sorry about the bleach thing, but this has replaced it. For me it's just safer, I feel more comfortable and it'll do roughly the same job quite honestly. It's going to be a bit more expensive. Bleach is dirt cheap don't forget. You know it's only about a quid for three quarters of a litre I think whereas this stuff is um, you know, seven or eight quid for half a litre. But then this is a you know a dilution uh, <laughs> 
concentrate, I'll get there in a minute. Concentrate, boy, it's a concentrate. And obviously I'm diluting it, so I'm getting an awful lot more litres out of my half a litre than I would do with the bleach, because that's a one-off. You pour the bleach in the water and you use it, uh, it's not a lot of good for much else then. I'll tell you what it would be good for, if ever you go down that path. It would enough clean your floor up in your grow room or greenhouse if you've got paving or concrete on the floor it doesn't have to give that a good clean it gets rid of all the algae and everything so if you have a floor like that that hasn't got plants on it um yeah chuck it on there but then you've got the fumes to put up with nothing's ever easy is it see you next time thanks for dropping by